Where the kicks at? Where the pains? Where the holes? Where the throws? You know what I'm saying? I'm calling this one, you have to bizarro and investigate everything that you hear and see and read on the internet when it comes to the martial arts. What I mean is that a lot of the conventional internet wisdom when it comes to the martial arts is totally wrong. Folks do not know what they are talking about. They're only half right half of the time. And even if some of the stuff that comes up is allegations, I just saw something I'm being vague on purpose because I, I don't want people thinking that I endorse or defend any type of, uh, you know, questionable behavior or behavior that makes the martial arts look bad. But I even saw something that was an allegation and I just scratched below the surface on it because I was just curious. And it turns out that it's only a crime because of the jurisdiction that it happened in, that if it had happened in another state, it wouldn't technically be considered a crime. Now, it's still bad form and it's still like not something you should do, but it wouldn't be a crime. And I don't think that if it had happened in another area, yeah, I don't think that it would have been considered a felony. But that's just a thing. Uh, so I'm thinking now if that could happen, if something that happened that ends up being an allegation could be like, well, I, I still think it's more than wrong, but if it's not a crime, if it's only a crime based on where it is, then even when I see allegations against people, I have to look into that and dig into that. There was, a, there was one school in particular back in the day, okay? that I had went to the school, I was seeing my training at the school. I could say I was an acquaintance of the instructor. I, I, I know him, but we're not really close at all. We've uh, just been to some of the same circles. So when I heard that something was going on at his school, I went and I did some digging. And I saw the internet, uh, you know, the internet evaluation of it. And of course I was tempted to go along with that because of feelings but fortunately for me i had another in i had made the acquaintance of someone that i know was close to him and so i waited to see what that acquaintance was going to say once that acquaintance gave his opinion and i consider that acquaintance to have a very qualified intelligent opinion based on his formal schooling alone not just because of his relationship with the person I'm talking about. When that acquaintance said that that dojo was bad, then I knew it was bad. And I even reached out and spoke to the acquaintance online. I well, messaged the acquaintance online. And the acquaintance responded. And yes, you know, it's like, okay, this time the internet has it right. So you have, you've got to do your homework. You have got to do your homework. If they say, if the internet says a style is bad, because they'll, they will just shut down, the internet will shut down the entire style. You need to look at it and say, why do they think this style is bad? Why do they think this style is bad? Or well, why do they think this style is good? If I were you, I'd look at whatever they're criticizing, do your own research, see if there's anybody that you know that's familiar with that style, and then make your decision on it. I'll take Taekwondo. Internet hates Taekwondo. Well, I should say there's certain aspects of the internet that take, hates Taekwondo. I, of course, know a lot about Taekwondo. Look at the channel. So, but when I didn't know as much about Taekwondo, and there's, I don't think I know everything about Taekwondo. There's so much to learn. The more I learn, the more I realize I, I just don't know. But I looked at the, looked at the criticisms tended to believe it, asked people that I knew were more knowledgeable. And what they would say is, yeah, but. Listen to their but. Still investigating. Long story short, still ended up going deeper and learning more about Taekwondo. So I called myself trying to address 
this and that and, and weaknesses of Taekwondo. And come to find out, everybody cross trains, so it's really no big deal. So um, the internet was wrong. And then the more and more I looked at it, I realized, well, a lot of people are just criticizing Taekwondo because they have poor leg flexibility and they can't do those kicks. If you can do those kicks and you don't mind doing those kicks, have at it, just have at it. And there are so many different types of Taekwondo, not just major styles, but schools, that even if you can't kick that well, there's a Taekwondo place for you. If all you wanna do is kick, there's a Taekwondo place for you. If you wanna do the dances and the forms that I like to do, I just call them dances to be facetious, but I, I know the seriousness, the seriousness of it, there's a Taekwondo school for you. Taekwondo actually technically does not have weapons, but if you want to learn weapons, it's Taekwondo school for you. Get out there and investigate it yourself and stop listening to these people that they, they're, they're just speaking from their own bias. That's all it is. They're speaking from their own bias and they just want to promote their style because that's what I noticed about a lot of, a lot of the, uh, the, the bigger known martial critics. If they have a background, if they have a background, their criticism tends to never shine a critical light on their own background. It just doesn't. So they're biased too. Now, one thing you can do, and I mean, it sounds cliche, is you can let your haters be your motivators. If the internet critics say, well, look at look at what you're doing. You need to blah, 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 blah. See, they don't blah, blah, blah. That's what makes that style bad. If, see if there's any truth to it, eh, maybe you can get a chance to cross train. I said in one of my earlier videos, I used to let people, it just happened by accident, but then I started doing it on purpose. Like if I started doing a Taekwondo form in public or just started doing some shadow boxing in public, there would always be somebody compelled to go, your style is wrong. So I'd be like, well, what's wrong? Well, you know, when you kick this way, blah, 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 blah. This is how I would counter it if you were gonna fight me. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, thank you. Thank you for the free lesson. Thank you for the free lesson. Thank you. Thank you for the free lesson. Especially people that are like, no, I, I, I'm gonna keep this style neutral. There are certain styles that tend to pick on, especially Taekwondo. And at this point, I know what they're going to say. And some of their criticism is valid, but a lot of it is not too. And I cannot remember who first gave me this idea, but basically to summarize, you have to know what a style is for. If you're trying to use a style for something that it was not meant for, of course, it's not going to work per se. Like using something sport oriented for self-defense, using something self-defense oriented in a sport environment, like expecting grapplers to be able to box, expecting boxers to be able to kick, expecting kickers to be able to box or grapple, or you see what I'm saying. Now that does not mean that you can't take an art that has a forte and mold it to be able, for you to be able to defend yourself. But what is self-defense? Protecting yourself from violence, not standing there and slugging it out in an ego contest. There was even one video I saw way back in the day. This has got to be like over 20 years ago now. This was this tiny Taekwondoan was in a ring with this gigantic grappler. It was two white guys, like one huge white guy one small white guy. The small white guy was a Taekwondo. The big white guy went to grab him. I had never seen anything like this in my life. The, the small white guy literally ran up the guy's arms over his head, over his shoulder and got away from him. Now to me, he ended up, now the small white guy ended up losing because he had to stand there and fight in the cage. He ended up losing that match. So you would say, see, that's why the grappling's better and the strength and the size. But honestly, if, if that was pure, strictly self-defense, which is how you should be applying martial arts, that small white guy actually would have won 
in my opinion, because he was able to, somebody tried to grab him. He runs up the guy's arm over him and kept going and left. If they were, if it was really a protecting myself from harm situation, small guy won, small guy showed better skill. He would have ran and kept going and that big dude would have been shot and he wouldn't have been able to, to get a hold of a small guy because a small guy would have been gone. And that's an example of how something that would work in self-defense. But if you put it in a, in a paradigm where you have to stand there and bang, then the size and the strength are going to outweigh the technique because he's not, he cannot leave the area. So just stop. You, you, you guys, you got to stop trusting what you see on the internet. I would even say question me. If you just don't believe anything that I'm putting out here on the internet, look into it for yourself. Especially like how people criticize like pressure points and stuff like that. I have definitely found that the conventional internet wisdom, they don't know what they're talking about on that. I, I'm not going to try to get specific, but there are other things. I looked into it. I met the people that were being criticized. I'm like, and what well, this is one real irony. It's like the people that are being criticized, they've already walked down this path. These other people that are criticizing them have journeyed. They've already figured out and come to some of these conclusions and they do some of the things they do for skill and skill building. And there are ways to apply some of the stuff that people swear doesn't work. There are ways to apply it for self-defense or even sport. And you know, internet just flat out doesn't know what it's talking about a lot of times. So you hear something, do your own homework, research it, Take everything with a grain of salt when it comes to the martial arts. I would say that the main thing that you should be wary of is crime. Crime. If someone has been accused of a crime, look into their cases and see if there's any weight to it. If, even with crime, it may not be the case. Look for cult-like behavior. If somebody is forming a sport cult, that tends to be bad, period. Even in terms of how people don't like how much some people charge for stuff. If something is being, if somebody's charging something that's too expensive for you, it doesn't matter if they're actually legitimate or not. For just like any service, if it's too expensive for you, it's too expensive for you. Don't parse into that. So thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please share it with people like to talk, talk, talk about the martial arts and peace. And as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate it.